new version here. Let's play this in full as always. Pop and plop. All right. That's all pretty cool. It's a good update. And thank you for your breakdown. I'm going to go in there one by one. So this is the spline version with a few more keys, a few more details. There's more with the set, no colors yet. That's totally fine. You're mentioning that you're struggling with the hands. Don't mind too much. I actually like the detail there. Even just kind of at the end, gives it some, just a bit of difference and, and contrast and complexity here, how it opens up. I think I have more general body mechanics comments compared to details detailed comments as well like there's some foot stuff i want to point out but stuff like this and I'm, i know i'm starting at the end but when you have movement like this and i know it's just a dangling arm that wouldn't really you know it doesn't affect the foot or anything major in the hips but it would still be nice because even with this here when you have quite the flop from right to left that would be good to have a little bit in that shoulder and then because of that some residual movement there, if that makes sense. So it's not so, even a, a good trick is to scrub through your shot. And you can kind of see where things are moving. It's just this, there's a, there's a very specific kind of separated feel to this move. Like when you have this here, this is nice. You get all the all ambient movement in there because she is leaning down and over. That's going to affect this, it's going to affect that and so on. And everything fans down in terms of the mechanics influence like that's nice but then you, you're in the section with the arm and then it's a bit just a bit too uh separated now the head note so generally when i watch this and this goes into some other things that you talked about and you haven't touched the ponytail you mentioned here but there is a certain speed to this and you mentioned that you feel like it's a bit fast but sometimes you feel like it's okay me watching this for the first time, I feel like this could be slowed down, this whole move. And there are a couple of reasons. It might be okay to do it if you had a little bit of lean back in the body, in the upper the torso, and a little bit of rotate back into the side on the head. As in, if you're moving this fast, the root over like that, then you would have a bit of drag in this. Not huge, it's not going to be... You know, like when you those cars, I don't know, at least in America, sometimes you have those car dealerships and I mean, you know, that's that's my car. But then you got those inflatable <laughs> things with arms and there's the pump there and it goes, it might completely move over. That's not what I mean. Like it's, it wouldn't be huge, but just enough. And that's my concern at the beginning. When you frame through, there's a drag in the arm. But the tricky thing too is that the drag is almost too clean counter but that i mean there yeah, let's see put one and skinning on see how that wrist is the amount of forward movement you have in the body is the same amount that you have in the wrist so when you look at this you can see this bit of a stickiness in the hands then it gets a bit bigger it'll pop to the left but then after that pop it can draw a line here you can see how that hand stays put on that line too and then it goes a bit forward but then it goes a bit back and now we're back into stickiness here where it kind of sticks in on that frame 2d space so you got to look a bit more on your clean spacing uh, of that arm going back and just looking at this you can see that this whole section just visually actually including this arm see that everything is stuck until here when this final is moving and there's some movement here but then at that point it's almost as if that head tilt and that arm swing are kind of happening at the same time. I know it's because she stops and then the whole momentum carries over in the, in the looser part of the body. But I would still find ways to offset things a bit more. But my main concern is, yes, speed. And I think even if you would add some drag in here, I think it would still be fast. Just a bit fast. Mainly also because, you know, she is tired. So... Yes, you could combine some speed, even if someone is tired because they're finishing, you know, rushing through and then they finally collapse. But given the overall rhythm of, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like she has like it's a chain on there. Uh, I would slow this whole thing down. Give this a bit more 
breakup, basically, between chest, neck, and head. To loosen that up a bit. And I would still bring that head back a bit. And then down. And especially on that step, you would have a bit more compression. Even if it's a little bit in the chest down, a little bit in the head. That then goes down and up again and over into that move. But then careful, you have a move over this way. And then bam, then we stop and actually go back. And then over. So this in real time. It's not poppy. But I think we can take that looseness but bring it into the beginning where it's the drag and then compression it goes down and then goes into the right move over here because so again once we're here she then again feels kind of stuck this is what i was talking about before she's always leaning this way throughout the whole thing and i think this will give us a bit more contrast as well i don't i mean again this is subjective but i feel like we could start here further back right leaning the head back go forward and then she can always rest a bit more straight on and then already start to go over there and then go back up you mean like that could have some looseness through there as well this is a bit of a fast move right there that root movement and you can see this when you track this line right there everything kind of stays put let me bring this onion skinning right you're kind of stuck on that line and then suddenly goes to the screen right and then you have a bit of a pause through there ba -bong, pause and then over. So I think generally, you need a lot of cleanup in your spacing. So I will give this forward move a couple more frames. Loosen up chest, neck, and head. Give this a bit more contrast in the head orientation. Watch out your spacing in that arm. I think even uh, take this off here. This arm here is also a bit fast. I'll give this a couple more frames. And this is all based on here. This kind of move and down. Like all the intricacies here. And it's cool. I like all of this. I like all of that. It's cool. Again, suddenly this arm phew, goes a bit fast right through there. But generally, this whole section from here to here and that uh, and that, it has a fairly realistic feel to it. It's not photoreal, but it's more naturalistic in its cartooniness. And this is why sudden moves like... Phew, and then that sudden body move, and then phew, that little speed up in that arm. That's why it stands out to me. Now, if you want to go fast here and fast moves, then I would still adjust this here. Because basically, you want to have you want to have a consistent feel and style to your animation in terms of timing and, and exaggeration. Now, detail-wise, what I was going to talk about is that when you have your weight on the shoe here in the foot. And then you're leaning over. As you can see, there's a big lean. You can see how this section is completely locked. There's a bit of a raise here. I don't know if that's just the body stretch or for some reason extended. Okay. Doesn't mean it doesn't get off the ground, but watch out how it goes up here. But it would be nice at this point to have a pivot off of here to lift this up. Maybe a slight foot roll. And then when she moves it forward like that, I like that back pivot here. But still could have a little bit of off the ground. You know, that side gets up a bit. But then also ease in a bit more. It's a bit of a linear key. Boom. How that foot stops. Now your foot roll seems to go in one axis. You just dial down. But she has a bit of a return this way in terms of the weight. See this? She goes this way and then this way. So to me, it will be down with a slight move. Like you want a compression this way. Not just a roll down straight because that's what the channel does. A little bit more. Not that you have to pivot off here and get this foot off the ground, but I think you want to give this a bit more life. Again, here the pivot or the, the foot roll is just dialed in without a bank. I will give this a bit more movement over this way. Again, that foot, that's a linear key right there. So I would peel off, pivoting off of here. Peel off foot roll with easing into that move. That feels a bit better. See, that's nice. You get a little... Ease out of that lift of the of the heel there into that. So it's there every now and then. I would just go back and really look at every single section for your spacing. And then timing wise, you're getting into a bit of a slow, even feel through here. Boop. That whole section. I know there's some differences in terms of well, suddenly now the head and chest are moving a bit faster compared to 
the whole thing, but there's a general feel of lack of contrast and texture to the time. It just feels kind of rough even till there. So that these are to me the biggest things. Just a little spacing issues, some acceleration moments that I would watch out for. It goes back into your spacing. Um, a bit more consistent contact here. Like your hand goes up. Again, this goes back into your spacing. Like your hand goes up here, stops, goes straight up, goes a bit to the right, and then slides over. And this feels like, wait, are we already on the chair? So there will be some chair movement. Then she starts to grab, but then that grab has a lot of slippage here. Because now it feels like, well, she's really putting all the weight on there. So this would have to go down a bit. There would be some lean back. This my thing might rotate over just a lot more sense of I'm leaning on this. Yes, there's weight on this, but it needs a bit more on there. And even on this pull, chair goes this way, but I feel like that thumb moves to the right. So there's a bit of looseness in terms of contact. And then suddenly it feels like we're almost intersecting here. Watch out. And speaking of compression, when she's like this, like all the weights here, the hips are like that. But now she's going to put all the weight on here. And I think you can, you have a little movement here in the hips, but then it suddenly stops. So I would just start to ease in a bit more, just a bit sooner. And then have what you have here. So it's not just that separate section. I would kind of feather into that tiny bit more. Then you want a bit more influence here. I see it a little bit. I think it might be okay. Maybe just a little bit, but the main one, it feels like here. But if you're so off balance, that means that there's weight here and there's weight here. That's why I'm saying compression here. And then I will put more force up on the hip on this end, especially now that we're lifting off the ground. We could have a bit more. Again, it's subtle. You don't want these to kind of sway back and forth like, you know, like a tipping boat all the time. But just a bit more. You have it here. But even then, I feel like it would be slightly softer through there. And then continue a bit. Because again, all that weight continues. So just a bit feathering out a bit more. Because you're already going down. And I will keep that hip up a bit higher. I know she's lifting and, and stretching this. But that means that it's still off the air. Off the ground. In the air. But with more pressure. So I would wait before you dip down with that hip there. But you have compression here, which is good. I do like the feel of the the plop and drop here. Boom. That feels pretty good. But then again, a little bit of fast move. Whoop. In the head. Whoop. Although that, I don't mind. This could be like your last collapse of... Ugh. But then again, look at contact. So when this... The forehead, side of the cheek, everything is going to hit the forehead... Uh, the forearm. It's going to have some compression, some residual movement contact movement in the hand just a bit more detail overall all right that is that thank you all right there's an email you can sign up you can start whenever you want you can submit whatever you want you get 16 submissions either way a like and subscribe would be awesome all right thank you